Thank you so much, uh, Sonil, and thank you so much, Kathy, for this wonderful uh, uh, presentation. And now uh, we are getting to our session. Uh, and it is indeed my pleasure to now introduce both of our presenters for today, Dr. Prabir Jana and Dr. Deepak Pangal. I'm going to first introduce Dr. Uh, Prabir Jana. Uh, Dr. Jana is a visionary in development, application, and management of technology in apparel manufacturing. Started his professional career with a private garment manufacturing enterprise in 1991. After a brief stint with manufacturing and buying organizations, he joined National Institute of Fashion Technology. Currently, he is a Shahi Chair Professor in Industry 4.0 at NIFT Delhi. During his 28 illustrious years in, at NIFT, he has served as Chairperson of Department of Fashion Technology, Head of Industry Linkages, Head of Information Technology, and Head of Research. His special research interests include technology improvisation, sewing automation, industrial engineering, ergonomics, 3D printing, and team uh, working in clothing manufacturing. A prolific contributor for technology columns in various apparel industry journals, he has presented papers in various national and international conferences. Prabir Jana is a graduate of textile technology from Calcutta University, postgraduate in, in garment manufacturing technology from NIFT, New Delhi, and PhD from the Nottingham Trent University, UK. Isn't that wonderful? Welcome, welcome Dr. Jana to Thank our you. event today. And now, of course, it is indeed my pleasure to introduce our second speaker for today, Dr. Deepak Pangal. Uh, he has been working with Department of Fashion Technology, DFT, at NIFT, NIFT, New Delhi, since 2009. He has earned his PhD in the area of bending dye design using AI application in 2015 from Sardar Vallabhai National Institute of Technology, Surat. He has done his Master's of Engineering in the area of CAD CAM from DC Rust, Murthal, Haryana. He also, with his research team, is developing the low-cost intelligence solutions for apparel manufacturing industry using industry 4.0 tools like additive manufacturing, mechatronics, IoT, and AI applications. He has a total 15 years of experience and has co-authored more than 25 research papers and filled five Indian patents. And of course, he is having, guess what, 10 million uh, INR rupees of research grant in the area of additive manufacturing and IoT enabled skill evaluation system. And of more than that, he has already supervised more than 30 master degree students and is presently supervising one doctoral degree student as well. He has done consultancy projects for various renowned apparel manufacturing industries like Raymond, Shahi Exports, uh, Trident, etc. in the domain of Industry 4.0. In his role as faculty at NIFT, he has been developing subjects like mechatronics, robotics, automation, and additive manufacturing. And the major project he's presently associated with our iSmart, which is what we are talking today, manufacturing of swing machine parts using additive manufacturing, intelligent systems of fabric defect identification, and automatic garment dimension measurement system. It is our indeed our pleasure, Dr. Deepak Pangal, for uh, you to be here. Welcome to uh, the event today. And with this, I would now like to request Dr. Jana to please share his presentation and start the event. Yeah, good afternoon all. I would like to thank Sotex Connect for giving us an opportunity to meet and explain iSmart to you. I'll just share my presentation. Just give me a minute. That's all right, sir. No problems. Take your time. Is my screen visible? Screen, uh, it's a blank screen right now, but yes, it is mm. visible. We can no. maybe see a whiteboard kind of a thing. No, 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 no. One minute. Because it was showing me. Maybe a different uh, window has got shared. Uh, you can uh, try and see if uh, you can first share and then put it on big screen. That's not a problem. Because it is uh, okay. Yeah. Mm. 
Yes, sir. We see the screen now. You can put it on the presentation mode. Yes. Yeah. Perfect, sir. We see it. Please go ahead. Okay. So good afternoon to you all. Uh, in the next half an hour, myself and my colleague Deepak will take you through an exciting solution that industry was looking for. And digitizing sewing workforce, uh, we are doing it through iSmart way. iSmart stands for intelligent skill mapping and rating technology. Why my screen is not changing. Yeah, it is changed, sir. Yeah. No. Okay, when you talk about digitizing the workforce, now we need to see that, you know, what is the challenge? The challenge is, the first challenge we're talking about is uh, the data collection by external or additional action. What does it mean that when actually we're talking about uh, digitizing anything, now, how are we collecting data? Are the data been collected uh, by somebody is doing something? For example, if we say that the sewing work, uh, sewing floor where the real-time data collection system is installed, and we are talking about uh, collecting the production data, then generally we expect the sewing operators to take the bundle, which is having a, probably a RFID sticker, and then which has been taken to the proximity of a scanner or been tapped or whatever, or it can be a simple, a tab where probably somebody is pressing a button or touching the screen. These are all external additional action. That's how the data is collected, uh, which has its own problem because you are expecting somebody to do the things rightly. That's how the data is going to come. If there is any intentional or unintentional, let's say mistakes, then the data will not come directly. So that's the first challenge. And in future, what is going to happen is it will be automatic. It is inherent, though no additional action is required. For example, suppose uh, when you wanted to look at, let's say, initial, let's say, body, um, let's say, testing when you're trying to do, you go to a treadmill to give your test, probably. Now, if the similar thing happens when you're doing your exercise uh, at gym and automatically your t shirt is collecting data, that is inherent. You're not doing any additional action to give the data. Challenge number two in the manufacturing floor frequency of data collection, that how frequently I am planning to collect data and should I collect data? Obviously, you know, everybody wants it and it should be real time. So we call it real time. So it, you know, so in probably 20 years before in a sewing floor, at the end of the day, data was collected and then compiled and looked at. And then it came that probably twice in a day, once at the before lunch and then the post lunch session, then came every two hours. Now we want uh, probably real time, but only the issue is uh, why do we need real time? Are we actually doing anything with the data? Like for example, suppose the sewing flow data, even if we collect real time, even if that means every minute the, the real scenario is coming, but are we taking any action every minute? No. So then probably if, if we can collect every hour and then we take an action every hour, then that is enough probably. So that's that's where we need to decide that how the, the data collection should be, what should be the frequency. So there should not be any over collection of data because if you're not doing anything. The third challenge, which is probably the most important in terms of operational issues, it's not technical, who is benefited out of the data? Typically uh, it is perceived that because management is looking for the data. So obviously management will be benefited. So everywhere is as an apprehension that, you know, if there's data is, that means is any real time data, any digitization helps home. Is it only the management is benefited or the workforce is also benefited? That need to be looked at because otherwise this initiative will not succeed because the both the stakeholder need to be in the same plane that this is benefiting both. So we need to look at that. We'll, see that how exactly that some of the solution, like what the solution, what we're going to discuss today actually is benefiting both. Because otherwise, if the both stakeholders not in the same plane, it is not going to work. If you look at sewing workforce, the, what are the basic facts? Which fact number one, uh, which probably we all know, but in terms of figure, it is 70% of all workforce, which means from the directly from the CEO to the security force in the gate, 70% uh, of the all workforce is sewing workers. 
If you look at the production worker, which is, which is around 85%. Fact number two, more than 80% of the value addition by time, that means the, the conversion takes place in the product, in the merchandise, is done by the sewing operator. That means the sewing, because it shows that how important the sewing operators are in the factory. Fact number three, which is interestingly contrary, they are the least literate in most of the cases, most vulnerable, but they are the life or factory. So what we are going to see today is that how exactly that we are taking care of digitizing the sewing workforce and uh, how technology can help them doing us and also that how this is going to help both the stakeholders. The problem is uh, the industry faces today is majority of the sewing machine operators are, it's globally, not only in India, are women. Why I'm men mentioning this gender uh, specification is because they are, that makes them a little more vulnerable to many of the scenarios like gender discrimination, bias app appraisal, wage inequality, work insecurity, and so on and so forth. Now, current evaluation system is primarily an assessment of quality and rate of production. What does it mean? When we say that we are assessing or we are measuring the sewing workforce capability in terms of skill, what do we measure? We measure only two things. One is uh, how good they are in terms of quality. That means how, how their uh, let's say output is, uh, how good they are, how, um, what, what is the quality? And then second is that how productive they are. That means how many pieces they are making. So basically there are two aspects. This is what we measure, but uh, how do we measure that? While the cycle time is taken as the post-mortem of rate of rate of production, because actually what happens that, you know, if somebody has taken five minutes to do and work, then you'll say, okay, it is the five minutes. It's not that during that five minutes we are measuring. That's the difference. And the quality assessment, what you do is purely subjective because it is the human being and with the naked eye, the quality is tested, which is subject to non-repetitive in nature. That means if, if you show the human being the same thing, you know, again and again, not necessarily he or she will rate it similarly. That's the uniqueness of human being. And most importantly, the some of the very important sewing parameters like average speed, sewing burst, that means how many sewing bursts somebody is taking to complete the sewing operation, uh, how much is the handling time, what is the needle running time. These are very important sewing parameters. Every industrial engineer knows that these are very important. But the problem is they can't measure it. And because of that, they cannot measure. So they cannot include or they cannot consider those parameters or they cannot rate any operator in these parameters while doing their assessment. That's because our technology does not allow us to do these measures. So what do we need? So let's directly head to the sewing floor once again. See, to just to see that, you know, what exactly happens in the sewing floor. I'll just make it a little slow so that it becomes easier. Now, when you see that uh, actually in the sewing floor, we see different operators doing the varieties of operations. So what we see now is uh, there is a sewing operator who is sewing the pocket. So we know it is a pocket attached. And that is how this the description of the operation, the, it will be recorded everywhere. So all the recordings everywhere it is pocket attached. But what she is doing, she is actually handling the fabric. She is aligning. She is matching the stripes. Then if you look at Another operation, let's say now he is uh, doing top stitch in the armhole. And again, it is the operation description, which is top stitch of the armhole. And that's how this, uh, how much time probably is taking, all these things will be recorded. So these are operation description. These are the name of the operation. Now this operator is doing collar top stitch. Now what happens, this kind of different operations while they are being done, the, their time is taken for doing this operation, provided they produce the satisfactory quality. So industrial engineers actually calculate the time taken and for the different operations, and then they make the nice table, which some you know looks something like this, and they call it skill matrix, where you can see the first op column where the operator's name is written, then the different operations, and their respective rating or the efficiency in the different operations are given. That's what we call skill matrix. We'll come back to, again, coming back to the same operation. What this lady is doing, 
she is actually doing short, short burst of sewing with precision stop and also pivoting the material anti-clockwise. Now, pocket attach is the operation name, but these are the skill that operator need to know to do the pocket attaching carefully. Now, this operation, the operation name is stop stitch, but now he is doing sewing in curvature. Now, these are actually generic skill. And when we say skill matrix, operators, this kind of skill should be presented. What you see in the screen, this is actually a skill matrix, a true skill matrix, where you can see that A, B, C, D, E, these are all different skills, like anti-clockwise curvature, sewing, straight sewing, and so and so. And for every operator, we have seen that how exactly they're performing and their skill ratings are shown in the numeric number. That's called skill matrix. That's where our the traditional understanding of so-called operation matrix, which all over the world people do it like that. And if we wanted to actually make a skill matrix, we need to measure those generic skills. And that is where we'll see that how iSmart is going to help us. Now we are going to the next screen. So need of the hour is to develop a system that can measure the important sewing parameters while the sewing is being done, not as a post-mortem and evaluate the process scale of the sewing operator. Also, what can measure the quality of the output objectively by image processing technique, not by the naked eye of the human being and evaluate the quality scale of the sewing operator. And most importantly, this should be objective. The system should be repetitive. It should be scalable. It should be human independent. There is because that, that removes the bias and it should be operation neutral. By operation neutral, again, we mean that operator's skill is those generic skills. The, the operation name is not the skill. That we need to understand by science. What ISMA does is it is developed as a result of more than 10 years of R&D at NIFT. This is a patent pending system which generates the numerical skill rating value of any sewing operator by evaluating seven different sewing parameters. All those sewing parameters which we, uh, you know, we discussed earlier that what currently industrial engineers know, but they cannot measure, but our system can measure that. And also by evaluating the visual quality of the output. So totally what we get is this is a 10 percent objective, repetitive, cloud-based, used minimum proprietary hardware just to have a minimum financial implication to the users. And most important, this is industry 4.0 compliant. Now I am going to hand over to Deepak, who is going to take you a brief demo of the system that how exactly it works. I am just stop sharing. Deepak, uh, you yeah. can take over now. Yeah, thank you, Professor Jana. I'm audible. Yes, yeah. Okay, my screen is visible to you. Yes, yes, it is visible, yes. Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. Uh, uh, now I would like to ex uh, take this opportunity to explain, uh, uh, to make an explanation about the iSmart system. iSmart actually a two-fold system, one fold at the shop floor level or at you say the production floor level, where the data need to be collected uh, using a uh, normal sewing machine, uh, which is available and on the shop, uh, every shop floor. And we have on a dedicated this proprietary uh, black box, which can be mounted on almost all the sewing machines, which is capable to capture the data while uh, stitching is done. Now, whatever the data is captured using this black box, the system is capable enough to upload at the cloud level. Now at the cloud level is the second fold where we have a dedicated AI enabled algorithms which are uh, trained enough or which are that much smart is uh, and capable to analyze the data and give you the desired output results that specifically here about the skill set of the operate, operator. Now how this whole system works, what are the parts of the system, what all um, other services are required. I would like to demonstrate that using this video here. Okay, now this iSmart system consists of 
some of the hardware system which are required to deploy at the shop floor level. This one is the dedicated black box, which I was just talking about in my previous slide. Uh, it is connected with the human machine interface uh, through which we can collect the data and this connecting USB route wire. And this is the laptop, A4 flatbed scanner and a barcode printer. Other than this, we require the sewing machine on which this black box can be mounted very easily. And it has it is required to connect it to the human machine interface HMI, HMI, and that is required to connect it to the laptop or any dedicated desktop machine. Now, how this whole system works? Once we have done with the installation, that hardly takes 10 to 15 minutes to do all this installation. We have developed a dedicated app which is at the shop floor level using which data is required to be captured. Now, before capturing the data, we have to perform the certain user uh, profile management. Like we have to create, uh, identify the data, uh, sorry, we have to uh, define the information about the operator. So we are going to collect the information about the op operator by clicking on the add operator. We'll just fed the certain information, first name, the last name and for Indian user, the Aadhaar card is mandatory because we are making the system very portable and that's why Aadhaar card is mandatory and other information. Once information is fed, the operator information is fed into the system, then we assign a test to the operator. Now this operator information we have fed here. Now we have to assign the templates which are developed by us only under this iSmart system. And we have the five different templates here uh, on which an operator is required to stage. An individual template is capable to capture a specific skill set of an operator. Now, once you're done with the assignment of this template to the operator, we are able to get the barcode sticker, which is the unique, uh, what you say, the uh, slip through which we can interface hardware and software. Uh, the evaluator need to attach this slip on the template assigned to the operator, the same. Now then he has to start, press the start button through the graphic user interface on the evaluator side. And once operator is ready, she can press the start button and start doing the stitching. She has to stitch exactly on the lines which are given on the template. And meanwhile, evaluator can see the data is started capturing here. And once Operator is done with the testing and completed his test. He just need to press the end button and remove the test template from the machine and need to scan it on the A4 flatbed scanner. Now, this is for the quality purpose. And earlier, the data was captured for the process evaluation as some of the parameter Professor Jana mentioned, like the uh, speed and other things. And now, once those parameters are captured and the scanning is done, the one more thing is required to be done. We have to fresh the data uh, from the scanned image to our local machine, which is the desktop app. And then we have to process the data. Only one single press process all. Then this data has been fed to the local machine and the barcode sticker which I've given that will able to match what template has been issued and what template has been tested. And once we are done with uh, this process, the last step at the shop floor level is to upload the data. Now, very easily we can upload the data. The upload data is can be uploaded using the pressing the tab button upload now, and the data will be uploaded to the cloud servers. And this is very simple and very easy one. Now, once the data is uploaded at the cloud level, we have an uh, algorithms available at the cloud level. We have an, a user management portfolio also. And the company back and able to see their dashboard that uh, for their operators, I'll show you in a demo dashboard here. The dashboard will look like this to the company. It can able to generate the different reports with the top management and the different hierarchy level can see the reports. Now, this is a data of a company uh, for the demo operators. The, all the app operators are been evaluated using this iSmart system and a broader dashboard has been generated. How they are good with the different skill set, A1 to 8 and 9 here. 
and the data has been shown at the global level how this stands at the global level high level which is the globally very high level none of the operator is at the very high level and the average level is what you say the 60 to 80 percent uh, level uh, and this is the skill distribution of the operator within the company only what this mm -hmm. is sort of the you can say the whatever the normal distribution of the operator the one who perform best in the company they are be high rated we have an other report for the individual operator level which you can see here individual operator is given this nine uh, parameter skill set uh, on the basis of uh, their performance how they are suitable for this one type of the skill set, how, how much is capable to doing the uh, pivoted anti-clockwise operation, how it is capable to good uh, to perform the pivot clockwise. Out of the 10, they have been given marks. This is purely objective. No human intervention is required in this. And third report we also have for the individual operator level, like would like to see here, how my this ABC operator is performing so that we can see uh, his score, this name is this, this Aadhaar number is here, so that we can see for the individual operator level. Now, individual operator will also get in a certificate like this and consisting of this QR code, anybody can scan this QR code and check the authentication, whether this is a original uh, information about the operator or not. We have a dedicated platform at the web also where certain information like an Aadhaar number and their date of birth and one or two information are required. If somebody having those information, they can check uh, what is the score of the operator. So this operator has been given a uh, total process score 47 and quality score 86. Uh, in the public domain, we are not offering this, uh, the individual skill set detail for the public domain, but for the company level, we are offering this uh, information. Now I'm handing over from here to Professor Jana to uh, tell the audience what the benefit to the manufacturer and what the benefit to the operator using this iSmart system. Yeah, I'll just share the screen once again. Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, because as early, earlier I said that in any digitization has to, mm, let's say, benefit both the stakeholders. Now, in this case, uh, we have management, which is a manufacturer. So first of all, because I, I think most of the attendee here are basically, let's say, let's say presenting the a management of the organization. So, so once they get the digitalized skill matrix, that matrix, what you say that what, what you see where the operation name, uh, sorry, where the dig, uh, generic skill score against the name of the operator is written, that matrix, what it can do? It can actually allocate the right operator to the right operation automatically. Now, there is no dependency on human being like right now it is the supervisors who run the factory because they know the information that who can do what operation because that's what in their head but this makes you transparent record available so anybody logically if somebody sees that operator abc who is present today incidentally and can do curve sewing on this 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 rating with sub sufficiently good uh, let's say value then you can actually allocate him or her to an operation where probably that curve sewing skill is required it is as simple as that so it is no no dependency on somebody think or somebody's information is in his or her head that's the advantage then why because because it is available now digitally any further, let's say, uh, you know, let's say allocation of the operator uh, automatically, if somebody wants to do, which is very simple, 
probably an algorithm can be written to the, the operator allocation automatic. Those kind of things can be done very easily because earlier the people have struggled just because the skill matrix is not correct, correct skill matrix was not available dynamically. Now that is that problem is solved. Now, because we are using utilizing operators inherent strength in both ways in terms of process as well as quality, it is likely that we are going to get higher production and better quality because, because I am actually assigning an operator looking at that somebody is actually good at straight line showing at and short bus showing accurate stop capability. And if I give you know, him or her that particular operation, maybe let's say level attaching where I need that kind of skill. And that means obviously likely that operator is going to do better both in terms of production as well as quality. It is easy to develop and maintain that uh, that's that's because there is no human being is involved in terms of making this because it is dynamic and also what it does based on like uh, when Deepak was showing you that distribution of the skill matrix it gives you two different skill distribution that means one because a lot of people actually wanted to know how good are our operator in terms of global benchmarks so we I, I come across this kind of question very often and what people generally do is uh, with their GSD number they just slash off or put a factor of 65 percent 60 percent abruptly based on their experience this based on their friends experience in the you know peers and then they try to do justice but it is actually going to tell the top distribution actually going to tell you that how good your operator are in terms of global benchmark no comparison with any particular country or whatever that means human physical ability wise what is 10 and how good are your worker second distribution tells that in your workforce within your company how many are good ones how many are medium ones and how many are bad ones typically in a normal distribution you should have more of the medium ones and few good ones and few bad ones that's what we call normal distribution this too will be able to help you in, and this is for every eight generic skill so based on that and based on the product you can actually design a clear training pathway for the operators that what kind of skill is required for your kind of product you are manufacturing and accordingly you probably do a retraining and upskilling or whatever and most importantly what is the basis so in the in the background science this is mtm database which is methods time measurement it is basically designed based on mtm2 tools so so because of that so it is worldwide recognition so there's no problem on that now we are going back to the operators because uh, we need to look at that you know why the operator because if operator is hesitant in terms of should they go for this test or not should it explore or should it expose their inability should it um, make uh, them vulnerable now what are the benefits to the operator first of all it is a digital certificate available at the portal what uh, like Deepak shows that in the certificate also there is a QR code. What happens like today when we try to change a company, we carry a resume. We have the, you know, let's say luxury to do that. But a sewing operator does not carry a resume. It is their skill, which is their resume. And unfortunately, there is no way they can carry that. So every company they appear and maybe they have to go for a physical test once again in terms of sewing test and sometimes it can be a little humiliating, especially for the experienced operator. Now it is simple. They will only say my iSmart score is this, you can check it. So either they carry their certificate or they tell their three different information like first name, date of birth and the unique ID number. Anybody anywhere can actually log in and check what is his or her score and when that was. That means even it tells the date, which date the testing was been done. Although it is uh, available to everybody 24 seven, also it is secure and temper proof. It is unlikely that all three information people will know. That can be accessed anywhere, anytime. And that makes that facilitate the easy portability between companies. Now the operator can actually move between one company to another with let's say a kind of satisfaction that yes they will not be able to uh, they will not be subjected to again another kind of humiliation or any kind of uncertainty or because of this objective evaluation now within the company a lot of people are actually using it for their annual evaluation because we need to do that every year now there is no bias now there is no discrimination no harassment no blackmailing because
is happening. So now, because this is what probably is neither management nor the operator, it is more of the buying houses nowadays, you know, they are now concerned about what is this benefiting, how it is benefiting the society in general. Now, this is actually emancipating the sewing of workers from the clutch of supervisors. If any un, let's say ethical act practices are likely to happen that which this system will not make that system to happen like that. This is also empowering workforce, transforming lives, and also promoting fair age, which is actually the motto of almost every buying house is not because in terms of while they are trying to look at that, how exactly the workforce has been treated by the different manufacturers, sometimes that makes the uh, kind of criteria in terms of giving uh, the business orders. So this is actually benefiting the Overall, the system is this, uh, you know, this iSmart is benefiting the organizations this way. So our vision and mission of iSmart is very simple. So we are digitizing manufacturing, which is one of the biggest problem in the industry, not only in the apparel industry and apparel manufacturing more so because it is labor dependent. So this is one way of one of the most labor intensive space in the manufacturing or we are you know giving a solution to digitize we are removing every kind of bias and we are transforming lives so that's what the mission of iSmart which is making us futuristic and sustainable in the long run and i am uh, let's say stopping the presentation of iSmart uh, if anybody wanted to know more about it uh, you can definitely visit our website for more details. Also, you can write it to us. But before that, uh, I think I will request Deepak to discuss some of our other initiatives, uh, which Sonil has uh, told us that you know maybe after the iSmart. These are all digitization initiatives. We are not discussing in detail, but we'll just briefly tell you if any interested people wanted to you know, know more about it, they can, of course, get in touch with us. Now, Deepak. Please, uh, please explain that probably what all we are doing in this other three projects. Thank you. Yeah, please stop sharing, Professor. Yeah. My screen is visible. Yes, Dr. Deepak, please go ahead. Yeah, other than this iSmart at an IFT, we are also working for the long back in the research domain. And this is our first uh, industry ready solution, iSmart. And recently, other initiative, we also made it commercialized. That's a 3D printing, uh, 3D printing of the machine parts and attachment at the shop floor only. So we have created a public domain lending page. You can see here www same day spare parts nift.com this is also commercialized the project is all about why industry is uh, required to have a long lead time and the compromise on the quality in the absence of the right parts which are available at the some another part of the in, uh, india or at some another country and they are not capable to have those parts at their shop floor uh, because that uh, either increase their inventory cost or either their lead time is very high or either the overall cost is very high. So we took initiative in this domain five years back and we are able to showcase that these parts are can be manufactured at the shop floor level using the 3D printing technology. This we have recently commercialized. For the more detail, you can visit this platform. And the other two projects are also we are presently working with. Uh, they are in research domain. Um, first one is the fabric defect identification by AI artificial intelligence. Uh, in this project, this is under the proof of the concept. We have able to demonstrate the proof of the concept and we are presently working in close association with the two, three companies for this project for the further implementation and the broad basing the data and the, what you say, the higher accuracy level, but we are capable to achieve the couple of the defects which a human being is able to detect using the naked eyes but my system is giving the better results for those fabric defects and the last project we are presently working with the garment dimension measurement or garment measurement inspection by artificial intelligence this is the another 
AI based project in which we are in the process of the doing the proof of concept. We just finish up with the training of the large data set in this domain. And uh, I think in a one or two months, we are able to complete with the proof of the concept. This is also we are working with the close association with the one or two of the companies. So I would like to thank you from my side and you can reach us uh, for this specific project uh, using this email ID. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Ravi Jana and Dr. Uh, Deepak Pangal for sharing uh, a brilliant presentation about the iSight, uh, iSmart solution. Uh, before we open up the questions to the room, I have a few questions for you. If uh, your permission is there that I can uh, put some questions directly to uh, make the people understand more about the solution. Um, just to, in terms of the complete solution that you just shared, um, uh, uh, Dr. Deepak, you can unshare your screen, please. Yes. So uh, just in terms of the solution that you already shared uh, with, the, uh, with everyone in the room today, and uh, especially in terms of uh, the implementation part, uh, how successfully are these sort of uh, solutions been implemented? How many uh, factories have already adopted this particular solution up till now in the commercial side? See, in the commercial side, we just officially launched on 6th of October or 4th of October. It's, it's, uh, so it, okay. as of now, we are doing working with uh, three Indian and one Sri Lankan company. Okay. So, and uh, because uh, although we are commercial, but uh, we need to, you know, or everybody need to understand that, you know, we are not a, a spin off company yet. So, mm -hmm. operational, uh, but as of now, we are live with, as I told you, that there are three companies in India and there are, there are more, let's say, client are, who are who are discussion with us in terms of, you know, like everybody has their own requirements. So they are checking that lot many other requirements. And one of the requirements probably, and maybe in somebody's mind, uh, but um, which is, uh, which might come and a lot of cases what we are, uh, getting the queries are, uh, is it good for knits also? Is it good for what fabric? So I think I before that question comes, that yeah, <laughs> before that question comes, because yeah. that's, that's what is very regularly coming. But I think uh, if, if that is in your mind, we need to understand what is generic skill. Generic skill is irrespective of operation, irrespective of fabric. And when, he, when I, I think probably the, all the industrial engineers knows that when we talk about MTM, so our fabric difficulty or fabric complexities are taken care. So it mm -hmm. is fabric neutral, it is operation neutral. So any manufacturer, only thing is any sewing machine manufacturer, sorry, sewing machine worker, their skill can be evaluated, whatever they make. They make uh, by using a leather, they make by using uh, knitted fabric, woven fabric, they are making t-shirts, they are making shirts, they're making trousers, laundry, anything that's not a problem because it is generic. And uh, is, as, as I understand from the conversation, the entire solution is designed for uh, ready-made garments as of now. And uh, yes. is it applicable to all industries in the fashion category, whether it is uh, ready-made to home furnishing and... Uh, Yes, uh, yes. made-ups, yeah? Yes, it, it is It is equally applicable to, let's say, home furnishing and made-ups. As you said, that as long as there is a sewing machine worker working and mm. wherever he or she is sitting and working doesn't really matter. If he is uh, stitching uh, even the car seat covers or there, because we, we are in discussion with the car seat cover company also. Anybody in terms of using sewing machine, that is fine. Okay. So before I put on my next question, I can see there are some questions directly coming from the room. Um, Mr. Uh, Pranam Mahajan from Masman Industries, he has a question. Um, Mr. Pranam, I'm just giving you an authorization to, uh, you know, you can talk. Uh, you can put in your live questions. You can just unmute yourself and you can put on the live question. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Pranam Mahajan. Hi, Somil. How are you? Good, thanks. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, in fact, Somil just asked that question which I was wanting to ask. Uh, 
because I'm into the home furnishing sector. So I wanted to understand that uh, whatever we were seeing on your presentation as to how we could implement the same in the home furnishing sector. Yeah, as, as I, you know, let's say, explain that it is anybody who is sitting in the sewing machine and doing the job is good enough. Okay. But but only only because like if you really looked at the eight skills, like some of the skills are maybe curved sewing. Now, if you say that, you know, I do not use any curved sewing. So that means in your operator database, if their score in the curved sewing is less, you should not really bother because your product does not require a curved sewing. But right, it right. is applicable. So only thing is that it will you have to intelligently map the generic skills with the operations what you do. You should be bothered about because if I am assuming that you are doing uh, home furnishing, not too much of curve. It, it, you can say I do a round shaped uh, probably uh, table mats or whatever. So you need to actually map that what you need and what you have. Correct. And this is scientific. That's all. Okay, we. I'll be in touch with so uh, so Mel. He'll uh, try and connect me to you, and we'll let, yeah, let yeah, us no see problem. what we can do together. Something on the industry. Definitely, part. Pranam. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Mahajan, for this. Uh, I have another question for Mr. Uh, uh, Jagdeshan. Um, uh, he is asking question: How do we combine the atomic skills, such as the clockwise turning, straight line swing, to arrive at the um, uh, to arrive at the expected cycle time for the composite skills such as uh, sleeve attaching. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, Ganeshan. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I know because he will always ask the most difficult question, but yes, there's a little bit of understanding. Uh, I think clarification of what I want is, see what it does is it gives an operator's ability separately, probably straight line swing, like maybe Prabhi Jana is uh, 6.3 out of 10 in straight line sewing and maybe 5.8 in clockwise turning. Now, see, this system is not generating any cycle time. Let's not, because that's probably a little bit of misunderstanding. What you are looking at those numbers, those are basically out of a maximum possible score of 10, what I am at. And you have seen, if you look at the most of the numbers are in the range of five point something to six point something. So basically my skill in those eight, you can consider those are eight different papers in my exam. And that is the score out of 10, all out of 10. Now, for example, if you're saying sleeve attaching, we need to say that in the sleeve attaching, is it a combination of straight and let's say anti-clockwise? Then you look at in your database, who is good in straight and anti-clockwise in combination, and then probably attach, you know, allocate them, that's all. But this score has nothing to do with your cycle time. Cycle time, the operation is entirely different. We're only saying that while doing the sleeve attaching, what all skill will be required, it might be having only one skill requirement or it can be a combination. What you understood is correctly that one operation can have a combination of multiple skills, but then we need to look at that, you know, probably those multiple skills in who is better or who is better in the, in the total pool, obviously, based on the availability, and then you allocate them. I hope I'm able to explain to Mr. Ganeshan. Otherwise, he can write it to me. He knows my email ID. <laughs> but, but yes, that was a tricky one, yes. <laughs> I'm sure the people can put up uh, some tricky questions as well. Definitely. So, um, just as I mentioned out to you, Mr. Mahajan, uh, who has just joined in from MESPA, they are uh, one of the largest uh, manufacturing fac factories uh, based out of Panipat, and uh, they run a very sizable operation. So, I've uh, he had just messaged uh, me uh, personally saying that in case of these kind of solutions are to be done at the factory level, what are the minimum numbers of lines that can be adopted for this kind of a swing operation? Minimum number of lines. See, yeah. uh, it does uh, based on number of operator, like every operator is counted at one subject. So it will give you, let's say, if you wanted to do, let's say your workforce, showing total workforce is 500. So you want to do say that, okay, I wanted to do that testing for all 500, that's fine. Or you'll say I have total workforce of 3000, but I will do only 1000 of them, that's fine. Whether, because uh, different uh, factories will have a different number of operators in a sewing line. So we're not going by line that, you know, factory has to decide. 
we just go by numbers maybe 1000 operators means 20 lines or it might be 10 lines or it might be 25 lines depending on what product you make now you can think about let's say first try it with uh, maybe one plant which is having 500 machines or let's say 500 operators do that because unless you do it a sizable chunk will not be able to if you if you remember that you know what you have shown the distribution you will not be able to use this effectively because otherwise you don't know in your total workforce how many are good how many are bad and how many are medium and then you will not be able to plan then you know well, let's say where they can be upskilled where they can be downskilled or whatever or if you say i will use it only for my recruitment like one of the companies says we are going to only use it for recruitment like any new operator will come and then we are going to go through this test and then you will decide okay whether should we recruit them or not so that's fine also but then it, it will be because suppose you need to do 500 so depending on how large your company is suppose every day you test 100 uh, because that that will be little you know you need to engage in a lot of let's say hardware to do that because technically we suggest uh, you know you do it 10 sewing operator per day using two this black boxes that's achievable actually you can achieve 12 to 13 depending on you know uh, your the, oper the person who is doing it so technically two black boxes you will be able to do it two black boxes means two sewing machines you need to engage and every day you will be able to do, in a eight hour shift you'll be able to test 10 to 12 operators easily and the record and the result is live so end of the day you have uploaded and then within 15 minutes that you can see the score okay that is also okay good. yeah okay so um thank you for uh, sharing that uh, we have another question from Mr. Anup Kumar. Uh, can yes. this give? Uh, can you give uh, skill metrics required for a factory? Yeah, that's that's what because like what uh, we have shown or what also the question that is only a, actually for a factory, uh, or you can say that basically consists of two lines having seventy eight or operators or whatever. That's that total result of seventy eight operators. What Deepak was showing in the dashboard. So that's so the, within that 78, the distribution, everything. So that's for you can say that's for a line. If you wanted to do for a thousand, then you will be able to see for a thousand. If you want to see it for, uh, see it for every hundred. See, yeah, so when you, know, when you see the distribution, if it is a too many operators, like suppose your factory is having 2000 operators, but you do not want it to see all 2000 similarly because your total factory is distributed into let's say five floors and you do not shuffle operators between one floor to another. So don't do this uh, distribution or don't do this analysis for uh, all together, because what you need is, let's say in one floor, you have four lines. And if you're allowing operator to be shuffled between these four lines, then create a, this, this dashboard for this one floor, which may be having hundred operators or maybe 78 operators. That is, you know, your flexibility. Dashboard gives you all flexibility, whatever you, if you say, I wanted to see the total thousand at one go, you'll be able to see. No problem. Okay, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Deepak, I, uh, Mr. Anu, uh, Anupam, I hope that answers your question. In case if there is a fo any follow up uh, question or uh, anything which is not clear, you can take a live questions also by raising your hand, and I can make you uh, talk online directly. Uh, apart from this, is there any other question from the members of the room? Uh, Mr. Mukesh Suneja has raised a hand. Um, Mr. Mukesh, I am just uh, uh, allowing you to uh, speak. Uh, you can unmute yourself and you can put up your question. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I would like to take this opportunity, uh, Sonal, for uh, we have placement open for IE. And if we have a lot of people who have been in this way, uh, we are into uh, uh, Mr. Prabhi, Dr. Prabhir, yeah. uh, our company, jo hai, wo, we just started with clean room clothing, which is uh, workwear clothing. Okay. Uh, specific field is our, where we Parma and uh, high-end uh, uh, garments jo hote hai for uh, Serum Institute and all those things we are making. Mm -hmm. okay. And one division is uh, where we are making fashion. So we have a need for AI. It's a small factory. We have 100 machines total. Okay. Okay. But we have very niche products, what we are doing. Exclusively quality-oriented and specialized field. Hai 
आई माई सेल्फ इज अ टेक्सटाइल इंजीनियर टेक्निकल हूँ मैं भी तो चीजें हम आर एंड डी जो भी हो रही है वो उसी फील्ड में हो रही है कि जहाँ पे एक निश प्रोडक्ट डेवलप हो इट वैसा तो मुझे कोई आई बताइए जो आ, अच्छे से छोटी फैक्ट्री में सारे डिविजन में अपने इनपुट दे सके चाहे वो कटिंग हो चाहे वो फिनिशिंग हो चाहे वो प्रोडक्शन हो yeah I, i will you know because you know don't mind by my answer but i think uh, you know you need to think it over what after i have said that uh, you know just yesterday i was speaking to somebody again in ncr they saying give me a good i i guys who will be able to do all solve all my problems and whatever whatever and this is a normal request from everybody not only ncr everywhere i'll say wait for another one and a half years and you will not need an ie person at all we are automating all ie so there will be only digital ies will be able to do all your job that's what i can only tell because uh, actually there is no good ie person because nobody wanted to become an ie now everybody from the day one they wanted to become a ceo <laughs> and if you can afford you can afford as uh, experts then hire sri lankans they are all over the world mm but if you say then give me a good i i'm sorry i can't give you but what i can give you is just wait for one more year so we are doing a total digital i you will not need a physical person human being is not required okay because okay. like you uh, you are not the only one believe me everywhere everywhere the people are only complaining you know that i am not having a good i person but but everybody has to have a i department mm. because that's a requirement for the buyer And so there is a IE department who does their own job, and the production department who does their own job, and they both coexist. Correct. <laughs> Sorry for my answer because because I don't have a solution. But I can't tell you that okay, this is a good IE person. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for highlighting that particular important uh, area, uh, Mr. Jana. And uh, as we all understand that the business models are all shifting towards the digital side. um and uh, with the solution what you shared today and especially with the automation and the digitization coming in the idea is that how we can upgrade your factories especially these shop floors where the efficiency can be removed uh, can be improved and uh, at the same time we can also look at ways of uh, digitizing the smallest operations in the area because the the reason of as you mentioned out ies are important till the time they are recording all the matrix which are happening in different department and uh, it's very difficult to get the good person on board at the same times the culture of an organization plays a very important role and the culture is uh, you know set up by the the top members of the organization the the owners and the uh, the all the top uh, members so that's a culture where in case if your culture is strong enough where the automation and the new areas are adopted uh, in a faster way i don't think uh, any ie whether it's a small or a big or a qualified will have any problem in adopting to your organization so that's been my experience of being in the industry for last 20 years and i see that's one of the areas coming in um one more question i had from you is the fact that uh, some of these uh, units um, are uh, you know fairly complex when it comes to technical production um uh, of course there are uh, you know majority of the factories are uh, doing the garmenting and the home furnishing but now with the technical textiles coming in uh, how do you see the area of i smart coming into an fusion uh, into technical textiles because there are certain non uh, you know fabric or uh, technical components which are coming into the garment swing where do we factor the productivity and how do we find Uh, resources uh, or how do we find the performance metrics of these resources coming into this area yeah uh, because uh, so let's let's take in you know, a technical product uh, let's say if it is a car seat cover then the only the material is different if it is a leather bags the material is different even if let's say uh, what uh, mr manish is making if it is a clean room garment i assume it will be that any of those uh, non woven fabric with three layers in between membranes and only difference is the fabric so we have a factors uh, in the because that's the reason so the mtm what i said which actually takes care of the fabric so we need to only factor in there and if somebody is saying that i want to do it for leather we'll just tune it for leather that's all because every as long as you are using the sewing machine and doing or for joining two plies 
it mm -hmm. has to be either straight uh, somebody has to stop somebody has to precisely stop somebody has to turn the turning can be anti clockwise turning can be clockwise some parts will have a curvature some part will not have a curvature it will be any of the combination of those eight that's the reason i'm saying that our crux is that we have that we have decoded the let's say operations into this eight it has to be combination of any of these eight and that's what you are getting it so whatever product you are making doesn't really matter but yes fabric the material which ma which makes a difference and that we are factoring in in our software so if anybody as of as of now we are doing it for only um, oven and knit fabric so all the oven and knit fabric manufacturers directly can use it but as of now we don't have any in a request for leather or whatever only if the leather or other material comes in we'll we'll just factor in that's all nothing else same okay. logic works because as long as somebody is joining in using that means a sewing operator sitting in the machine and doing like some of the operations where are which are automated like uh, some of this shoe uh, let's say sole attaching or whatever where it is automated there's a different kind of operations some of those probably is because where the sewing machine is not there you don't use it period because this is purely for sewing machine operator product can be anything uh, material can be anything so whether it is a technical textile medical textile doesn't really matter okay uh, just have a follow up question on the same uh, thing since you also mentioned it uh, the two stakeholders and especially coming in from a worker side and uh, since you are capturing the data of how the workers productivity matrix has been captured now supposedly a fact a worker who is earlier working in a uh, let's say home textile factory is now shifting to a menswear bottom factory um, because the operation size and the skill set on both the uh, factories are different how do you how can he take his skill set of let's say an underperformance or a lower output in one unit and show is uh, showcase that to a second unit which is of making a faster or a higher set of outputs in the number of units how is that kind of a matrix been uh, managed on the uh, on this particular system see you see i i think this is very you know interesting question you put in and which is probably uh, you know Mm, prana will also get a little bit of answer like for example suppose somebody is leaving uh, pranav's factory and he has done the score in ismart although he was showing home furnishing but suppose his skill in some of the you know his score in the some of the generic skills are let's say curvature showing or some of the small parts stopping and showing and you know turning some seems to be very good although he was working in as that means his those skills are not utilized but he was good yeah. so suppose now he is applying for a, as you said that let's say a menswear manufacturer and menswear manufacturer has to know that what all skills will be required for my product and they are probably mm -hmm. curvature showing and required and the somebody mm -hmm. is actually working in from pranav's factory but his scorecard says that he is good i don't need to test because right now otherwise the apprehension is oh he has worked for home furnishing so will he know okay let him put it in the machine so he need to actually sit in the machine and do it and it takes a lot of time people do not realize for testing an operator you actually spend a lot of time and that means which is money mm. and you don't need to do it if you see that okay his score in those but i need to know that that what all i'm looking at based on my product should i need a straight line sewing guy or should i need a curved line or should i need an anti clockwise guy or should i need a clockwise guy that need to be done and that very ie guys can actually map it that's not very tough if somebody understands garment the ie has to very quickly will be able to map against these eight skills with their all operations okay thank so, you so, so much that, that, that exactly is probably you know very, very interesting examples so where actually somebody was working but his actual in you know, some of the skills are not utilized yeah. so he has been branded as a you know, he is a worker for a home furnishing factory but in, yeah. interestingly probably he has good skills but mm. product was not uh, been there so he was not utilizing it mm. no hope, i i hope totally I'm able to, yeah hope I'm able yes to thank you so much uh, i i thought uh, that is one of the uh, relevant questions because that's how yeah, the workers yeah. move from one factory to the other factory yes, sometimes yes, they yes. don't get the 
the same factory in which they are coming out from. True, true. Um, just a last question that we want to take up uh, before we can wrap up the session. Mr. Ganeshan has put in another question to Mr. Deepak about the garment measurement by an AI. How does an operator spread the garment? Uh, how does an uh, operator spread the garment for being captured by the camera? Uh, does he have to change the orientation of a garment from a different measurement, arm, whole length, chest, uh, full round or something? I think this is another googly because... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I would like to ask. I would yeah. like to. He just asking yeah, the yeah, this is procedure, a, uh, yeah. procedural yeah. challenges. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, like uh, in any garment, the, the other features like these are the the shoulder points, and these are your cold collar points, and these are the other side base points. So the way we are training our model, so he, the model is capable to identify all these features in a garment. Agree. Now for capturing the image. You have to spread the garment on a table or any top of it. The camera will be there. It will capture the image and the, it will identify you to full spread the garment on the sun platform. Uh, because as we are telling, presently we are in the proof of the concept stage and later we will do the automation in this domain. Also, we are able to see the couple of the solutions where the garment can be spread easily on a specific, uh, what's the table top and some other places. So you have to spread the garment. So the camera will come and it will capture. It will identify all the pre-trained features of the garment and it will easily identify the distance between those features. Those features can be customized for your garment also. Some of the measurements are important for your garment, which are not important for some other garments. What feature you would like to extract? And then it will tell you these are the dimensions, these are the distances in these two points. And you have an a preset exactly would like to uh, need in that garment what should be the ideal dimensions me measurements so it will compare with that so the later we're also planning to make an a what you said a consistent report also for you that's a reporting part where exactly your measurement are missing all the times what are the history you are having with you uh, where you have on a bottleneck all the times so those things can be done overline on the digital manner so that's the whole uh, story altogether we are working in this direction but system will be the capable enough to identify all major features yeah, just to top probably or uh, top up uh, what deepak says uh, uh, th there is already a machine available by the way commercially which uh, you just put the lay the garment and it measures 14 <laughs> measurements of the garment at one snap the commercial machine available already Okay. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, hope that answers your question, uh, Mr. Ganeshan. Uh, so we are almost closer to the time. In case if anybody else has a question, you can just put it right now. Uh, in the meanwhile, I am just sharing uh, an important session that we are just uh, covering up um, uh, just over... Uh, the, uh, this is a session which is coming in collaboration with Noida Export Promotion Cluster. Uh, since this is all talking about, today's session was talking about the garments um, and the sewing uh, workforce. We are, uh, this particular session what we are referring out to is a quality improvement and sustainability norms in the apparel exports. This session is coming with Mr. Manjeet Singh Sani. He's a senior quality consultant uh, in this industry and is also a CEO of Paramount Instruments, which is one of the largest uh, lab instruments manufacturers in the country. He would be talking about uh, the quality norms coming in in the future and what the buyers are expecting in. Uh, this session is happening in Noida. It's a physical event, which is happening on the 11th of December or in Sector 27 Fortune Hotel. So members from Noida uh, Export, promotion, uh, uh, Export Promotion Cluster, the um, apparel cluster, they can join in for this session. And uh, should there be any question related to the quality, you can definitely write to us in advance. Thank you so much for sharing this. Um, and um, uh, so I, we are almost towards the end of the session. Uh, if you like our session, that what you have seen today, what you've heard from Dr. Pa uh, Dr. Deepak Pangal and uh, Dr. Prabir Jana, please share your comment with us. Team Sotex has just shared a link in the chat box. Take about a minute uh, to just leave your comments and feedbacks. Should you want to connect with them, uh, please leave your uh, contact details, email. Uh, Mr. Jana has already shared 
the contact email id for, uh, that you can reach out to them it's ismart at neft dot uh, um, uh, sorry dot uh, nic at, uh, dot in if i'm not mistaken uh, mr uh, deepak if you can just put in that uh, email yeah, id once again in, in the chat box yeah, yeah so uh, people do not miss out um, any closing comments uh, dr jana before we wrap up the session yeah, I, I would like to thank, uh, although the attendance was uh, you know, not, not probably that great, but yes, there are some very quality questions because obviously the people who are joining were really interested to know this. Uh, and, and I assume that uh, the video also will be available. Those guys will not be able to join. They can actually see it later. And um, yes, the, the clarity is coming in the industry. Initially, that's, that's the hesitancy in terms of you know, understanding that you know, how this is going to work. Uh, without uh, really knowing the operators, because it actually we sometimes say the iSmart is actually ECG of the sewing operator. Like like you sit and then you know then you your all data has been taken in the doctor and doctor will say this these areas you have this this kind of problem. We like sometimes you know we kind of trying to do that, but it is nothing to be scared for the operators. That's the reason I'm saying that what benefit the operators get that is also very important so that you know many cases we are now realizing that operators wanted to say that you know they are saying i want to do it once again last time you did it so then now they wanted to improve their score so those kind of things are also going to come because people will say you know two years before my score was this but i now i wanted to do it again so that you know my score will be improved and our portal shows the last score only so your latest score only will be visible Thank you, Sotex Connect team, for actually hosting us. And I hope, I think, you know, it will be able to send that, I think, very important message of, you know, digitizing and how important it is and how to do it rightly. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Deepak. Uh, any closing comments from your side, sir? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Sonil. Thanks for the invitation. And uh, providing this platform to speak to the large audience here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, just for everybody's information, the, uh, the entire uh, event was live on the Facebook. Uh, in case if you missed out in any part of the event, uh, the beginning, or you joined it in the middle, or in case if your members uh, or your organization members who would like to know more about what this solution can offer, you can log on to Facebook on uh, Sotex pages. Of course, this uh, event was uh, broadcasted across in 15 uh, groups on the textile industry. So all of the people can see the complete uh, video recording of this sessions. In case if you still have questions, you can write down directly to ismart at uh, nift at ac.in. Uh, ac so uh, I'm sure uh, you will have your answers coming in there. Uh, we would definitely like to have your feedbacks and your comments, reviews. Please share them with us. And it gives us a confidence and much more inspiration to bring out such events in front of you. I also would like to thank uh, the entire set of Sodex team for putting the session together. Deepak, uh, sorry, uh, Gagan had to sign off early. He was not well. So on behalf of Gagan, I am concluding this event for every one of you. Thank you very much once again, Dr. Joanna and uh, Dr. Pangal for coming and sharing this important information in front of the industry. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. much. And we look forward to having more such things. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. threads and elastics. So I would just like to add up that this Sotex is a really nice initiative done by Mr. Parminder and his uh, co-founder. And uh, this will serve as a platform to a lot many people who are looking for 